Ranking the best starter from every team is not an easy task. There are a ton of different numbers and metrics to look at, and it's hard to decide which one should matter more than the others. I have managed to get a list that I am happy with. This list will have one pitcher from every team, so there are guys that are top 30 starting pitchers in the league that won't be on this list because they aren't the best on their team. I did it this way so we can talk about some guys who we don't get to talk about a lot. The pitchers on smaller market teams that may not be the elite of the elite. They don't get talked about as much as the Garrett Coles and the Spencer Striders, but they're still good and they deserve some attention every now and then. This also means that a pitcher from your favorite team will be in this video, so make sure you stick around for that. And if you ever disagree with me at any point, go ahead and like the video to show your frustration. I just want to take a couple of seconds before we get into it to talk about how I'm going to be ranking these guys. This is a prediction on how good they'll be in 2024, so age is going to be a big factor. If you're older, most likely we will see some regression. If you're younger, there's a better chance of improvement. I'm not really interested in ERA. I'm more interested in things that are in complete control of the pitcher, stuff like swing and missability, strikeouts, inducing weak contact, ground ball rate, limiting walks, reducing home runs, things like that. ERA will be useful in some cases, but I'll take more weight into the other numbers. With that being said, we can start off with number 30, which is Ryan Feltner of the Colorado Rockies. I had a hard time picking the best pitcher on this team. There's not much to choose from. I ended up choosing Feltner just because he's young. He throws hard. He had a decent fifth last year in the low fours in a small sample size. I really just don't see Kyle Freeland, Austin Gomber, Dakota Hudson, or Cal Quantrill doing much. So I just went with Feltner here for number 30. At number 29 is Paul Blackburn representing the Oakland A's. Similar situation to the Rockies, not much to choose from here. Blackburn excels at inducing weak contact with an 82nd percentile barrel rate and an 86th percentile hard hit rate. He put up some decent strikeout numbers for the first time in his career last year, which allowed him to lower his FIP into the high threes. He's 30 years old, so he's probably only going to get worse from here. He comes in at 29. At number 28, we have Mackenzie Gore for the Washington Nationals. It was between him and Josiah Gray. Gray just walks too many batters and doesn't strike out enough to compensate for it. Gray was the team's all-star last year, but he had a pretty bad second half. Gore has the tools to be a great pitcher. Obviously, he was a top prospect for a while, and he still is young at 24 years old. He hasn't really tapped into that potential yet, so for now, he sits here at 28. Coming in at 27 is Reed Detmers for the Los Angeles Angels. No more Otani, Detmers takes over that one spot in Anaheim. He doesn't have the best underlying numbers, but he did pitch 150 innings last year with a 4-1 FIP. Lots of strikeouts, walks are a little bit of a problem. He has a good curveball. He's only 24 years old, and he was a first-round pick in 2020, so the upside is there. Coming in at 26 is the best pitcher from the Boston Red Sox, and that is Cutter Crawford. He put up some good numbers last year. Fip was in the threes. Strikeout to walk numbers look good. He is a great four-seamer. He doesn't throw it all that hard, but he spins it pretty well. Gets a lot of vertical movement on it. You gotta love that out of the four-seam fastball. This leads to a lot of swing and miss, but he just doesn't have that secondary pitch he can rely on. That's why he sits here at number 26. But if he does develop some kind of breaking ball off-speed pitch to go with that good four-seamer, I could see him moving up in the near future. Number 25 is surprisingly Nathan Avaldi. I was surprised how low we ended up on this list, but this is where we start to get into that next tier of pitchers. It starts to get tough to order these guys. He started off 2023 great, but he had some injuries in the second half of the year and struggled when he was healthy. The strikeout numbers weren't really there and the walks were okay. He's 33 years old, so most likely things aren't going to improve, but we'll see where he goes. Coming in at number 24 from the Kansas City Royals is Cole Reagan's baby. I'm a big Cole Reagan's lover. You might not even know who he is. He hasn't played in the majors much, and he plays on the Royals, and they weren't that great last year. They didn't get much coverage, but you should know who this is. He was in the Chapman deal sent over from the Rangers. 90 innings last year, 3.47 ERA, 3.19 FIP, 10.6 strikeouts per nine, 3.84 walks per nine. Needs to get those walks down a little bit, but those are some good numbers. What really makes this guy exciting to me is that he's a lefty that knows how to get righties out. He has one of the best changeups in the league. He throws it almost exclusively against righties. He doesn't get a lot of drop on it, but it moves well horizontally. 152 batting average against it, a 192 slugging percentage against it, nearly a 35% whiff rate. Those numbers are very good, and those are pretty much just against righties. He throws the slider to get lefties, which makes sense, and is almost just as good as his changeup. Honestly, 24 is feeling kind of low for him, but I don't want to get too aggressive. Cole Reagan's 26-year-old lefty, good stuff, gets righties out, capital D, dangerous. 
Another newcomer here at 23, none other than Tanner Bybee of the Cleveland Guardians. Great rookie year for him, finishing runner-up in the AL Rookie of the Year race to Gunnar Henderson. You can see why. He put up some good numbers. The ERA at 2.98, probably a little lower than you would expect this year. His FIP was up at 3.66. The strikeout to walk numbers could be better, but looking at his arsenal, he doesn't really have a bad pitch. He's a good fastball, good curveball, good changeup. None of them are really elite, but he has three good pitches to rely on. He induces weak contact. He put up an 80th percentile barrel rate in 2023. Tanner Bybee, number 23. Number 22 is Hunter Green for the Cincinnati Reds. Obviously, he's had a lot of hype around him ever since he was born, it feels like, but he hasn't been able to put it together quite yet. But just to show you his potential, I'm going to compare his numbers to Spencer Strider, who of course is going to be coming later in this video. Same exact arsenal, similar velocities and spin rates. Green's fastball moves more horizontally though. This leads to more barrels and more home runs given up. He also needs to get the walks down, but the potential is there for a breakout in 2024. The strikeout numbers are crazy, just needs to touch up a few things. Number 21 is Dylan Cease of the Chicago White Sox for now. Might be traded sometime, probably should be traded, but that's a conversation for another day. Past two seasons have gone in the wrong direction. He's walking more hitters and striking out less. The FIP is worse. The ERA is worse. The expected stats are worse. The fastball velocity has gone down since 2021 by a significant margin. Things just aren't looking good for him. But we can't ignore what he did in 2022 and 2021. So he's still up here in the rankings. Possibly could get back to his old self. But for now, number 21 felt like that was a good spot for him. Getting into the top 20, we have Zach Eflin for the Tampa Bay Rays. Man, the Rays always just find a way to turn these average pitchers into something else. All the numbers improved. He had a sweeper to his arsenal. He also began throwing his cutter a lot more and his four-seamer a lot less. Those are some classic Rays moves there. Eflin was always good at limiting hard contact, but now he can limit the hard contact. He gets out via the strikeout, and he pitches a lot more innings. I don't see him getting much better than 2023. He is 30 years old and doesn't really have the raw stuff you would expect from a dominant pitcher. So I'm being a little conservative with him here, putting him at number 20. But you never know with these Rays, man. He could win the Cy Young, honestly. Number 19 from the Pittsburgh Pirates, Mitch Keller. Two years ago, this guy could have been considered one of the worst pitchers in the league. Last year, he figured out how to induce weak contact, started throwing a sinker and sweeper instead of just his four-seamer and curveball. This helped out a lot with the ground ball rate and limiting barrels. In 2023, he began striking people out. His sweeper was so good in 2023, it moves the most out of any starting pitcher's sweeper at 18.5 inches of break horizontally. This led to a lot more strikeouts, and he's on a similar path as Zach Eflin, you know, limiting weak contact. Now he's figuring out how to strike out batters but I do like his stuff a little bit more than Eflin's, so that's why he's here, one spot above him at 19. At number 18 is Sonny Gray from the St. Louis Cardinals. Now you might be saying, buddy, he was just a Cy Young runner-up last year. What are you doing? Well, the Cy Young only really cares about production. Things like ERA and whip. Projecting success on a player doesn't care about those numbers. His expected ERA was much higher than his actual ERA. Now, expected ERA isn't exactly a perfect stat, but when your difference is that big, something is up. His ERA was so low because his home runs per nine was all the way down at 0.39, which is much lower than his career average, which is around one. He's probably going to give up more home runs next year as he regresses back to his averages. Still a good pitcher. He's going to be 34, so regression is expected by the numbers and by the age. Coming in at number 17, Baltimore Orioles number one guy, Kyle Bradish. What a breakout season from Bradish last year. 2022, he struggled a lot, but in 2023, he made his slider his main pitch, which was the best move he could have done because that thing is nasty. Hitters can't hit it. Just look at these numbers. He's a sinker slider guy, which is a great combination. Strikeout to walk numbers are great. He limits the home runs. FIP is pretty low. It's looking good for the Orioles and Kyle Bradish. One thing that he is lacking is he doesn't strike out a ton of hitters. He gives up his fair share of hard hit balls but he does induce a lot of ground balls with an 80 percentile ground ball rate. So most of those hard hits are just ground balls to an infielder. Number 16, Justin Steele of the Chicago Cubs. He's just good all around. He doesn't really have overpowering stuff, but he has great control and doesn't give up too many walks with a 93rd percentile walk rate. He induces weak contact, which I love. I don't know how many times I've said induces weak contact in this video, but it's definitely a lot because it is very important for every pitcher. Steele's not a dominant ace, but he's a very, very, very good, reliable starter. Now, getting into the top half of the list, 
leading off at 15 is Yuri Perez. Not Jesus Lazardo, Yuri Perez. This kid's just insane. We just talked about Justin Steele. He doesn't really have the dominant stuff. Yuri Perez has the dominant stuff. He throws 97 plus, second highest spin rate in the league on his four seamer. He's 20 years old, putting up these numbers on an innings limit. You would expect him to walk a ton of batters because usually these young flamethrowers struggle with control, but he doesn't. His one weakness, and why he's only number 15, is he gave up way too many homers last year. He has a very low ground ball rate, which is expected when you got a fastball like this. You're not pitching to induce the grounder, okay? We're pitching up in the zone. We're getting the swing and miss. Second percentile ground ball rate, not good. 11th percentile barrel rate, also not good. You can't ignore the stuff, though. If you strike a guy out, he can't hit a home run. I don't know how many innings he'll pitch this year. We'll see where the Marlins take him, but the sky is the limit. Number 14 is Fromber Valdez for the Houston Astros. I see a dangerous trend here going for Fromber. Ever since he had been in the league, his MO has always been that heavy sinker, getting ground balls, getting outs that way. He's always given up a lot of hard contact, but most of the time it's gone right into the ground, so who cares? The problem is his ground ball rate has gone down from 70% in 2021 to 67% in 2022, now to 55% in 2023. That's still very good, and it's in the 92nd percentile, but he's still getting hit hard. These hard hit balls are now more often line drives and fly balls rather than being ground balls, which usually doesn't end up ideally for the pitcher. He still put up a really good FIP, good strikeout to walk numbers, so he's still good, just not as dominant as he was in 2021. Number 13, Yoshinobu Yamamoto for the Los Angeles Dodgers. He's going to be great, I can assure you that, but, but the transition, usually not the smoothest. Kodai Senga last year struggled in the first half, then caught fire in the second after getting used to the majors. Major League Baseball is a lot different than the MPB. Different balls, different environment. Yamamoto will be good. He got $325 million for a reason, but 2024 might not be as dominant as the numbers he put up in the MPB. Number 12 is Zach Gallen for the Arizona Diamondbacks. 34 starts last year. Round of applause for that. Absolute horse all-around great pitcher, pitched 210 innings last year. His profile is kind of similar to Justin Steele, except he throws more innings and has more experience. Great walk rate, good strikeout rate. The stuff isn't amazing, but he gets outs, and that's the number one job for a pitcher. Fastball changeup, curveball guy, mixes in a cutter and slider. All three of his main pitches are great. Not elite, but great. That's why he's here at number 12. Doesn't quite have the dominant stuff, but he's a reliable starting pitcher. Can't ask for much more. Number 11, just missing out on the top 10, is Joe Musgrove. Fastball, very good. Curveball, also good. The last time his FIP was over 4 was in 2017 with the Houston Astros. It's consistent. Very good in terms of the walk numbers. Strikeout numbers are a little lower than I expected before researching. An injury last year threw off his best season of his career. If he pitches a full season this year, I'm expecting some pretty good results. Breaking into the top 10, first off, we have George Kirby. It was between him and Castillo for the Mariners. I just went with Kirby because he's a lot younger and his underlying numbers are better. Kirby's biggest asset is his control and aggressiveness. He's not going to walk you. He put up a .9 walks per nine last season. That is so low. Best in the league. Not really even close. And he still has some okay strikeout stuff to go along with it. The control is there. And when you're the best in the league, it's something that important. You're going to be a good pitcher. Now at number 9 is Kodai Senga for the New York Mets. This, in my opinion, is where we start to get into the big guns. Why talk about anything else with Kodai Senga when you can talk about his forkball? Last season, it had a whiff rate of nearly 60%, which is the highest recorded whiff rate of any pitch ever in a single season. The tunneling between the four-seamer and forkball is so good, hitters aren't able to pick up on the forkball until it's too late. Last year, he got off to a slow start in his transition to Major League Baseball, as we discussed before with Yamamoto, but in the second half, he was lights out. Now, he doesn't have a great breaking ball and walks a fair share of guys, but he probably has the best two-pitch sequence in the game out of any starting pitcher. It's either him or Strider. We'll talk about Strider later, but Senga coming here at number nine. Number eight, this one might seem a little bit weird, but I have Tarek Skubal of the Detroit Tigers. I feel like a lot of people forget that this guy was a top prospect. He graduated at number 22 in the league on fan graphs. Last year in a small sample size, he lived up to that. He's a fastball slider guy, uses a changeup to get the righties out, kind of similar to Cole Reagan's. The strikeout to walk numbers were amazing last year. Now I think they will regress a little if he plays for a full season, 
The FIP of 2.0 is insane, obviously, but his home run to fly ball rate was a little lower than you would expect. Most likely that number will go up next season. He's going to give up more home runs. His baseball savant page is just full of red. His underlying numbers are so good. Tarek Skubal, he's a potential ace in Detroit. I know I'm being a little bit aggressive here, but this ranking wouldn't be fun if there weren't these breakout projections in it. Number seven, he's not new to any of these lists, and that is Corbin Burns. Now, you might think he's a little low, but he's only gotten worse since 2021. The strikeouts have gone down. The walks have gone up. That's what he was known for, striking out a lot of guys while walking almost no one in comparison. Things are just not going in the right direction. Now, he's still good. 3.39 ERA, 3.81 FIP, probably has the best cutter in the game. I just don't think he's a top five perennial Cy Young contender anymore. Just missing out on the top five at number six is Pablo Lopez for the Minnesota Twins. Lopez had a breakout year last year after being traded to the Twins. He was always good at pitching to contact and getting ground ball outs, but in 2023, he began striking out hitters at a very high rate. This led to a low FIP and the lowest expected ERA in the league. He rarely finds himself behind in the count. He has a five-pitch arsenal headlined by his changeup that he can throw at any time. Not a single pitch he throws is bad. His underlying numbers are amazing as well. Just take a look at this baseball savant page. He's above average in every single metric. 2024 is going to be a great year for Pablo Lopez, and the Twins signed him to a four-year $73 million contract before 2023. After this free agency, we see all these starting pitching contracts. That extension is an absolute steal. It's, I don't even know what to say. Like, put him in jail. Put the Twins in jail, please. At number five is Logan Webb of the San Francisco Giants. Doesn't walk anyone, gets outs early in the at-bat with a very high ground ball rate. This leads to very few pitches per at-bat, and he will pitch a lot of innings. Last year, he led the league with 216 innings pitch, which I love. At the end of the day, the pitcher's job is to get outs, and he does that better than anyone in the league. Now, he's not just some innings eater that can go out and give you length. He has the quality to go along with it. 3.25 ERA, 3.16 FIP. Those are great numbers. He throws a change up 42% of the time, and it's really the only pitch he needs to throw. It's that good. It gets 6.3 inches more drop than the average changeup. That leads the league, and it leads to the high ground ball rate. He's only 27 years old, so he's probably just going to get better. At number four is Kevin Gosman of the Toronto Blue Jays. He's just consistent. The past three years have been so good for Gosman. He strikes out a lot of guys, doesn't walk anybody, uses that great splitter to get outs, the FIP is always low with Gosman. He's had a sub-3 FIP the past two years. He's only a three-pitch guy with fastball, splitter, and slider, and he's getting up there in age at 33 years old, but I think we can still expect a couple more good years from Gosman. Coming in at number three is Zach Wheeler. He pitches a lot of innings. He strikes guys out. He doesn't walk a lot of hitters. He gets weak contact, and he's done that for six straight years. He's not had a single, even average year in the past six years. He's going to be 34 this year, so there's some possibility for regression, but he just had his second best season of his career last year, so maybe not. He has a dominant four-seamer, one of the best in the league. He throws it almost 50% of the time, yet batters still can't hit it, as it has a batting average against of below 200. Zach Wheeler, top three pitcher in the league. If you say otherwise, you just don't know what you're talking about. Now at number two is Garrett Cole for the New York Yankees. Number one and two, these guys are interchangeable, honestly. I think this is a clear top two. The order is up for debate. I put Cole at two for a couple of reasons. He is older. He's going to be 34 years old this year, but there is no doubting how good he is. In the past eight full seasons, he's thrown 200 innings in six of them. That is just insane for the modern game with pitch counts and the amount of arm injuries that we see. Just a devastating four-seam slider combination. Righties can't hit it. Lefties can't hit it. 2.63 ERA, 3.16 FIP last year. Cy Young, what more could you ask for? Garrett Cole, number two. We all know how good he is. Finally, getting to number one, it is Spencer Strider. He's only going to be 25 years old. He has some of the best stuff we've seen from a starting pitcher in a while. 13 and a half strikeouts per nine. That's just insane. And he isn't walking a ton of hitters either. Just a 2.8 walks per nine last year. He didn't win the Cy Young because his ERA was high at 3.86, but he led the league with a 2.85 FIP and his expected ERA was just 3.09. He had two main concerns in 2022 going into 2023. Could he pitch a full season worth of innings at this level? And can he keep the walks down? He accomplished both of those. He's basically a two-pitch guy, throws his four-seamer slider 93% of the time, which usually isn't good for a starter, but both those pitches are elite. Until one of them starts to fail, he's going to be one of the top pitchers in the league. 
And that does it for the rankings. Let me know where you disagree or if my list is 100% perfect. If you want to see more rankings, let me know. And if you don't want to see more rankings, also let me know. Thank you for watching. Make sure to like the video if you disagree. Goodbye.